Having sampled the esoteric solutions of law and religion, I set out to see what science has been bringing to the table and what answers it might offer for the future. So began more wandering. My guides were people with titles unfamiliar to me. Human elephant conflict specialist. Bear manager. Danger tree faller blaster. I spent time with predator attack specialists and attack forensics investigators. Builders of laser scarecrows and testers of kinder poisons. I traveled to some of the hot spots. Back alleys in Aspen, Colorado. Leopard terrorized hamlets in the Indian Himalaya. St. Peter's Square the night before the Pope's Easter Mass. I considered the contributions of bygone professionals, the economic ornithologists and the rat searchers, as well as the stewards of the future, the conservation geneticists. I taste-tested rat bait. I was mugged by a macaque. The book is far from comprehensive. 2,000 species in 200 countries regularly commit acts that put them at odds with humans. Each conflict needs a resolution unique to the setting, the species, the stakes, the stakeholders. What you have here is the highlights of a two-year exploration, a journey through a world I had not known existed. The first half of the book considers the felony crimes, murder and manslaughter, serial killing, aggravated assault, robbery and home invasion, body snatching, grand theft sunflower seed. The perpetrators include the usual suspects, the bears and the big cats, and some less usual, monkeys, blackbirds, Douglas firs. The later pages explore acts less grievous but more widespread. We consider the jaywalking ungulates, the vultures and gulls that vandalize property for no discernible reason, the littering geese and the trespassing rodents. Of course, these are not literal criminal acts. Animals don't follow laws. They follow instincts. Almost without exception, the wildlife in these pages are simply animals doing what animals do, feeding, shitting, setting up a home, defending themselves or their young. They just happen to be doing these things to or on a human or that human's home or crops. Nonetheless, the conflicts exist, creating dilemmas for people and municipalities, hardships for wildlife, and material for someone else's unusual book. Chapter 1. Mall Cops. Crime Scene Forensics When the Killer Isn't Human. For most of the past century, your odds of being killed by a cougar were about the same as your odds of being killed by a filing cabinet. Snowplows kill twice as many Canadians as grizzly bears do. In the extremely uncommon instance when a North American human is killed by a wild North American mammal, the investigation falls to officers and wardens with state or provincial departments of fish and game, or fish and wildlife, as less hunty states like mine have rebranded themselves. Because the incidents are so rare, few of these men and women have much experience with them. They're more accustomed to poaching cases. When the tables turn and the animal is the suspect, a different kind of forensics and crime scene know-how is called for. Without it, mistakes are made. In 1995, a cougar was presumed to have killed a young man found dead on a trail with puncture wounds to the neck, while the true murderer, a human being, walked free. In 2015, a wolf was wrongfully accused of pulling a man from his sleeping bag and killing him. Cases like these are one reason there is WART, Wildlife Human Attack Response Training, and by its founder's admission, a horrible acronym. WART is a five-day course, part lecture and part field training, taught by members of the British Columbia Conservation Officer Service because they have the experience. British Columbia has more cougar attacks than any other North American state or province. It has 150,000 black bears to Alaska's 100,000, 17,000 grizzlies, and 60 predator attack specialists, 14 of whom...